Welcome to the Trekker installation and training guide for the software setup for your T-Series cameras. In this session, we're going to talk about the consideration for your camera placement in your lab, as well as talk about how to manually adjust your camera while also examining what's changing in the software. Lastly, we'll also discuss the camera settings within Tracker. I'm going to show you some tools you can use to help get your T-Series cameras positioned in your lab space. Specifically, we're going to show you how to use preview mode to your advantage. First thing we need to do is go from 3D perspective to camera view. With camera view, when we select a camera, we will see what that camera is seeing in our lab space. Next thing to do would be to right click on Vicon cameras and then select Enable Preview Mode. This is going to put your cameras into a different mode so we will be able to see a visual representation of our lab space. It will be easier for you to figure out the exact positioning that you need for each camera. Um, you are unable to capture in this mode, but it is a very good tool for determining position and figuring out where you may have reflections in your workspace. So let's go ahead and start with camera one. You can see a slight gray, slight outline in our lab that's just indicating where we have our force plates. We also have five markers out in our volume, so we have an idea of where we want the center of our volume. Let's just keep on clicking through the cameras. Let's stay here. Here you can see a better view of our lab space. Sometimes when you have stray reflections in the outskirts of your camera view and you're not sure where it's coming from, turn on preview mode and you'll be able to see exactly where it is in your space and that will help you find it so you can remove it or somehow cover it so you don't have to resort immediately to masking. Um, as for positioning your cameras, when you have uh, preview mode turned on, you can lay markers out in your space the entire volume you want to capture um, and then you can see exactly where they are in your camera view. Uh, it's a nice tool as you can see with all our cameras we have a good coverage of our lab. So after you're done manually adjusting your camera positions to turn off preview mode, you will right click on Vicon cameras and select disable preview mode. I'm going to go over some of the different settings on your cameras. First we have the aperture. The aperture goes from open to close to being open and, let, and letting the most light in and the larger the number gets, the less light is being brought into the camera. Now let's take a look at the focus. As you make adjustments to this, it's going to depend upon the lens that you have. The larger values, infinity, will allow you to focus at a greater distance, and smaller values mean that the object would be closer for you to be able to focus it. We'll look at adjustments to this in the software. Now to make adjustments to the aperture, First thing that you're going to do is lightly unscrew the toggle and then move the aperture left to right depending on the setting that you want. When you're done, tighten the screw again. For the focus, it's the same thing. You lightly unloosen the screw and then move that section of the lens until you're happy with the setting and then tighten it again. As you're making the manual adjustments on your camera with focus and aperture, you're also going to want to look at the software too. So I've laid out five markers in our volume. And what we want is to change our grayscale mode from auto to all. This will allow us to see exactly what our cameras are seeing. That way we can optimize the markers so that we are getting the best information we can to come into the cameras. 
When focusing and changing our aperture, what we want is to have a bright white center and a light gray outline. We want each marker to be very circular. The one in the back corner is kind of iffy, so let's see if we can optimize that one. The first adjustment we're going to make is changing the aperture. Let's show you what it looks like as we start to close the aperture more and more. You'll see our markers are starting to get dimmer, and then slowly they'll go away completely. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and open the aperture back up. We want to make sure that we didn't open the aperture too much that we're getting a lot of noise and reflection in our volume. So I just zoomed out real quick to double check that everything looks good. So I think our aperture is appropriate. So now what we need to do is start adjusting the focus. So my colleague is going to start turning the focus from one side to the other. And as you'll find out, there's a sweet spot with the focus. As you see, we lost that one marker and the centers of our circle started to become gray and lost that bright white center. So we're going to start turning the focus the other way until we have that bright white center and as circular markers as we can. Again, we want to keep a gray outline with the markers as well. So we're going to just make adjustments until we see that with all five markers. We have positioned and focused our cameras. Let's go ahead and look at some of the properties within the tracker software that you might be interested in making some adjustments to. For this video, I currently have a Vanita and a T-Series connected together because the properties I'm going to go over are applicable to both cameras. So I've gone ahead and selected local Vicon system in our systems tab. Now let's go down and look at the properties below. The first one is the requested frame rate. The default that we have it set to is 100, and you're going to make adjustments to it according to your studies and what you're looking at. For your T-Series camera, the maximum frame rate before windowing is going to vary with your T-Series that you have. Go ahead and check online for details on that. As for your Bonita, the maximum frame rate before windowing is going to be 250 hertz. Now below that we have our buffer size. If you're recording at a high frequency or if you have a lot of cameras, you can go ahead and bump your buffer size up. It will not hurt. Um, if you are just using Vicon products when recording, everything's connected to your GigaNet or your TrinNet, go ahead and you can bump up your MX buffer reserve and this will mean that your buffer reserve is dedicated to Vicon products. Now let's go ahead scroll down and take a look at some of the core processor properties. First we have the marker movement speed. This value ranges from 0 to 10, where 0 is stationary and 10 is a fast-moving rigid body. The default value is 5. For cameras recording at 100 Hz, this translates to a marker moving between 1 to 3 meters per second. When you make adjustments to this value, please consider the frequency at which you're recording. For example, we're recording at 100 Hz. So we will increase the marker movement speed for high marker speeds, but we'll decrease it when markers are in close proximity but do not move very much. If you increase your frequency, then the distance the marker moves between each frame will be different than if you are recording at 100 hertz. Keep this in mind when altering the marker movement speed. Now we have minimum cameras per marker. The default value for this is two, and that means you must have two cameras see a marker at the same time in order for that marker to reconstruct. For systems with many cameras, you might want to bump up this value. We often suggest that you leave the value around two or three. If you set it too high, then you might start losing real markers. On the other hand, if your value is too low, then you might start seeing stray reflections. You'll need to play with this setting in your lab in order to determine an appropriate value. The ray intersection factor setting is a reconstruction algorithm 
that will be able to form a single reconstruction from the rays of different cameras. This value ranges from 0 to 10, and the default value is 4. High values could cause noise to be created and markers to be reconstructed in incorrect positions since it allows more distance between the camera rays that contribute to the reconstructed marker. On the other hand, values that are too low might lose real markers since the rays need to be closer together to form a reconstruction. The minimum reconstruction separation setting enables unique markers not to converge when they appear very near each other in a camera view. You will want to set this value to one and a half the marker size that you're using in your lab. For example, if you're using 14 millimeter markers, you'll want to set this value to 21 millimeters. This will enable two unique markers where the centroids might be less than 21 millimeters apart in a camera view to retain their uniqueness. This setting enables only the most likely unique marker reconstruction to be reported. Now let's look at some of our camera properties. So I'll go ahead and select one of our cameras, and then we'll go down to the properties below. Let's start with some of the settings. The first one would be strobe intensity. The strobe intensity controls the amount of light emitted from the strobe unit. This value ranges from 0 to 1. Lower values mean that marker edges will be less bright, and they may be ignored as markers. A higher value means that you'll have a brighter image in the camera view. The next one is gain. The gain is additional amplification of grayscale pixel values. We recommend that you keep the gain at one and don't increase it more than don't increase it more than two. When you if you need to increase the gain, only do so if you're recording at more than 500 Hertz or if your markers are far from your camera. Next is our grayscale mode. When you're capturing, go ahead and keep grayscale mode turned to auto. The only one that you would be concerned with other than that is all. And as you remember, when we were focusing, we turn our grayscale mode to all so that we can see the pixel data that's being brought in from the cameras to help us focus and fine tune our cameras. But when you're capturing, keep grayscale mode set to all. Now let's look at some of our centroid fitting properties. The first one is threshold and our default is 0.5. Again, this ranges from zero to one. The threshold controls the level of reflection to be accepted by a camera. With lower values, good markers will appear very bright and this could increase stray reflections. With higher values, dimmer pixels may be ignored. Then we have our minimum circularity ratio. This minimum circularity ratio adjusts the threshold used by cameras for fitting centroids to grayscale blobs. Again, this goes from zero to one. With lower values, non-circular markers may be accepted as actual markers and then reconstructed. With higher values, circles must be full and bright to be accepted. The last one I would like to take a look at is the maximum blob height. And this number is the maximum number of pixels per line that a grayscale blob can contain in a horizontal line. If it exceeds this number, then the MX camera will determine that this blob is not a marker. So you will need to make adjustments to this depending on what kind of camera you're using. If you're using a T160, which has a greater number of pixel resolution, then you may need to increase this value. It will depend upon your focusing. So take a look at this if you are concerned.